What's good, people? My name is Mario Kodri, and you're watching The Team Talk, a special film by Versus and Childland, which speaks to some of the most inspirational figures in the UK about issues they've overcome to get to where they are. It can help to know that others, no matter who they are, have also had these problems, including pro ballers and incredible music artists. We'll be speaking to three special guests about their experiences, issues they've faced, and how Childland can help you in similar situations. Childline is a free and confidential service, there to support all young people under 19 in the UK with anything, whether that's pressure at school, problems at home, or issues in the wider world. When I think about being younger, something that probably affected my mental health that I can really see um, that stands out. Being like a young black man, single parent household, one thing that definitely stood out that really affected me was sort of this sort of pressure to make sure that you do well because ultimately the way everything, or I perceived everything to look at me was that I was statistic. And already the statistics are against me. If I think about trying to speak about that in and around the environment I was in, the response would have probably been, bro, <laughs> we're all going through something, you get me? Like, you just have to keep moving. Which is daunting because I don't think that my experiences or anyone else's experiences within that sort of space are invalid. Asha, like, have you got an example of a specific moment you recall where your mental health was affected? Yeah, I really struggled in lockdown. I was super low. I was like crying all the time, like for no particular reason or something would just set me off. And I just couldn't figure out why. In the end, I kind of figured out it was actually my contraceptive pill that had essentially brought on this like wave of depression. Do you feel like you would benefit from having someone to speak to when you feel, or if you ever feel that way? Yeah, because sometimes in a heated situation or when you're going through something, although the people around you that love you are great, sometimes you just want someone neutral or objective. When you're in your own head all the time, it just becomes a blur. So you need like other voices to pick it apart and then stuff starts to like add up or they make suggestions or ask questions and things just become a lot clearer. So that's why talking was just like so important. I wouldn't have figured it out myself, I don't think. Truth is a lot of people out there don't have anyone to speak to and to know that Childline and such good service like it is out there to just get things off your chest and talk to is so important. If you don't have anyone out there, you should just get on with it because that's what life's given you. Whereas that's not the case. I think there's this thing where you need to be at an all-time low to contact Hardline, which is not the case. You know, you should be able to speak when you first feel something's not up to stop that from getting to that point. You can even call them when you're happy. And just like, just because you might be in an environment where you don't feel like you can share the good things that are happening in your life. What Childline is good for to what I like know it to be is just taking away the awkwardness and the pressure of speaking with someone face to face. Because sometimes you don't want to put a face to your counsellor. Thinking about key parts of a young person growing up, one of those key elements is school and education, right? Especially exams, which can be a real, real pressure moment. It's something we all have to go through. How did you all cope with the pressure of school academics? Yeah, I remember when I was doing my A-levels at the same time I was doing like grade eight classical piano, grade eight drums, grade eight musical theatre singing and like juggling all of those at the same time. And I think when you're doing so many exams and so many tests, you begin to like value yourself on how you perform in those and your worth in those years can become a bit attached to like what you're achieving and not necessarily like your qualities as a human or what you who you are as a friend, um, or your like creativeness. Yeah, I think for me, the one was when I was 16, um, doing my like GCSEs and trying to balance football. That was a big moment because I was trying to get my scholarship at Tottenham as well, whilst trying to do my, my exams. And I guess like trying to do so well at both of them, I was not doing very well at any of them. That was a really daunting period for me. Perhaps could have spoken up a little bit more about it as well, just to my friends, just anyone, just at the end of a phone call, just to tell people how I'm feeling, get things off my chest. How about you, Christophe? 
Yeah, nine was the worst, bruv. And I'll tell you that because I kept beefing my friends and my friends kept beefing me and none of us understood why. Now that we're at the age where we can look back and acknowledge what was going on, we're older now and we'll talk about stuff that was happening at the time in our own personal lives that we didn't have the courage to say at the time. One might have uh, issues with their mum trying to find time to go to work. Another one might find issues because they got like how many different siblings living under one roof. They don't have no personal space. Do you get me? And for me, I feel like my main issue just in life in general, but especially at that time, was just feeling like I misunderstood. There was a period of time where I just wouldn't even come out my room. I would be in my room, go to school and come back straight to my room and just be in there. Like sometimes I'd just sit there and just be like, I don't really want to go to school tomorrow. And then like growing and going to uni. I remember like a couple of times I used to go to uni and make it to the bus stop and have a panic attack and turn right back and go home. Do you get it? And that's them times there I'm like 18. So I'm grown. So I shouldn't be facing, I feel like I shouldn't be facing the same stuff that I was facing when I was in school, but I am. And I don't know what to do about it. Teachers would observe, they'd call my mum. Mum would ask if I'm cool. She knows that I'm not, but I'm saying I am. And sometimes when you're young, you don't even know how to identify or, or like navigate the fact that you're not okay. Services like Childline, they've been about for years, like from when I was younger as well, but I never really had the, the courage to call. You hear the horror stories about social services coming to drag you out of your bed in the middle of the night because you like snitched on your mum or snitched on your dad when like it was never fully explained to me like they won't step in in that way unless you're actually in danger. Do you get what I mean? And then on top of that, it's the, the peer pressure of it. Like, it's just like, if you're like vulnerable about your emotions in that sense, you're pulling child line for, do you get what I mean? But I wish that, obviously this is why I'm here, innit? To let young people know that, obviously if you're going through anything that's makes you feel like life is just life in, there's always like a safe space for you to go and nobody really has to know that you've gone there until you're ready to speak about what you need to speak about. Do you know what I mean? We've shared like different examples, but are all testaments that we've been able to not only get through those moments, but how so many people share those moments as well. How beneficial was it speaking to someone, or if you couldn't speak to someone, how do you think speaking would have benefited you? Yeah, it was so helpful. And I think, like Dylan said, problem shared, problem halved, but also you need like other voices around you to kind of like look at the puzzle, look at the problem, and then almost take the pieces apart and put them back together and kind of figure it out. Even speaking to people is very difficult because you don't know who, who else in the room is on 10%. Do you get it? Like, I could vent my whole life to you right now, but you're on 10% as well. And now I've got 20 and you've got zero. Do you get it? And that's not necessarily fair. Like, I was talking to my friend the other day and she was like, one of the main things that you've learned, what, that you learn when you're growing up, is to ask consent to offload on somebody because you never know. And that person could love you dearly, but in that moment, you could give them 20 minutes and they're ready to hear it. But in that moment, if you offload on them, you could be causing them to have a breakdown in the next five. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, yeah. Yeah, no, I've, the reason why I fully hear that is because that's almost my life story, right? It goes back to what I said about being a burden. You think to yourself, okay, this issue is heavy for me, but even if I then try to then move this issue elsewhere, does that then make an issue for you? And that's why, like, for me, I think uh, a, a unbiased place which is away from the situation would have probably been so beneficial for me personally because it's like that person has no view on the situation. Hopefully that person understands sort of what that situation is to and can kind of speak to a similar lived experience but it doesn't feel like you're adding more burdens to that person because that person is there to actually just be there, you know? So we've discussed a lot, right? And one thing that I think is really important for people to know is that Childline is there for everyone, regardless of race, gender, 
where you grow up. If you're in the UK, it's there, it's available for you to use, right? But growing up, I didn't think like a child and stuff like that was for me, if you get where I'm coming from. Like coming from a West African background, it's one of those things where socially, community-wise, it's like everything's handled within the village. There's not going to be aunties and uncles picking up the phone and understanding mm. me. And I'm In going your to be accent. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm speaking to someone and they just don't understand why this would be an issue because it's not a lived experience they've had to deal with. But mm. the truth is, that is just something that I thought it's not the truth. But ultimately, we have to address the elephant in the room. Like, I have faced issues where I've definitely been discriminated against, like racial prejudice, like it's things that you, you face and it's like, okay, well, who can I speak to about things like this that actually understands what it feels like? But even speaking on that, have you experienced cases or instances where you have faced discrimination due to who you are at your, your core, essentially? Yeah, I feel like for me, because I grew up in a mixed race household, and I think like at school, sometimes teachers treated me differently or like I'd get mixed up with the only other Asian girl in the class or when we're playing sport or whatever. But at the time, because I was so close to my mum, who's white and who's, I've generally had quite a, a British upbringing, I didn't really understand it or I didn't really put two and two together that actually, wait, perhaps I was being treated differently because of the colour of my skin. And as much as my mum is the most incredible support, that's not necessarily something that she can 100% relate to because she's never been through those... She's not a person of colour. She's never been through those things. Back in the day when I used to kick ball, especially when I was, like, a young girl and stuff like that, and we'd have to go, like, off ends to play, shouting, like, racist slurs at me and stuff like that. And I don't know how... how I couldn't fathom at the time where the hatred was coming from. You don't know me. Do you get it? You don't know me. You probably don't even know why you hate me. It was the parents that were shouting. It weren't even the kids. Obviously, everyone says, don't be a bully, in it. That's just a, a thing that everyone always says, like, from when you're young, don't be a bully. And when someone's bullying you, you talk to someone about it. But what if you can't? Do you know what I mean? What if you can't? What if you don't know how to? What if you don't understand what's happened? Do you get it? What's, um, with what you're saying, what really stands out in my experiences anyway, sometimes when you face certain things, like I'm thinking about when I was younger, right, there was a perception where it was kind of like, that's just how it is, you have to be fine. And it was like, mm. when I was speaking to people in my community, whereas a child learn, I could have probably spoken to someone that comes from the same background from me and that probably wouldn't have been what they said. It'd probably been like, you know, you are how you feel, that like you're allowed to feel that. That's a, a massive, massive thing that I think about. But Dylan, I have to ask you, because ultimately I've always, like, you're someone I commend highly. How do you think it would have benefited if you could, one, speak to people from your background about how you felt? And, like, how was it actually navigating through just being, like, maybe one, if not the only, South Asian? Yeah, I mean, in terms of my background and playing football, Obviously, it's not the, it's not really the thing to do. Do you know what I mean? I think anyone, you know, from my background would go to university, go on to do a law degree, doctor's degree, and and go down that pathway. But for me, I didn't want to just do that because that's what people done, and I wanted to do what I I enjoyed and I loved. I went to a good school, and a lot of teachers probably thought you should. Why are you playing football? You know. You, you're going to a good school, you've got good grades, just go down the safe route, if you like. Probably knocked a lot of belief from me at the time. So yeah, I think that's just my experience in terms of the odds being against me sort of thing. I kind of relate to that as well in terms of maybe having like quite a traditional upbringing and things like academics being valued so highly and this kind of like world of like expectation and like everyone thinks they know what you should do and where you should go in terms of uni and career and what you're capable of. Being able to talk about the pressure of expectation, depending on like what your parents and your mentors around you think you should be doing is important. And as you said, I think like it knocked my confidence because it made me doubt 
whether I should be doing music, and I, I still doubt it sometimes. I think we all do. Um, but yeah, I just feel like I can relate to that point. So thinking back to that time, which we've all discussed was a high pressure moment, did you ever struggle with your identity? And if you did, what advice would you have for a young person struggling with their identity now? Yeah, I think I did. I think in some ways I wasn't white enough. In some ways I wasn't Indian enough or in touch with my Indian heritage. I still kind of battle with that a little bit now. I think the advice I would have given myself is if your friends can't necessarily give you that point of contact to relate to you and to relate to what you're going through, and if your parents can only give you one side or the other because one is Indian, one is English, reach out to somebody else for support, maybe someone external, neutral. I could have contacted Childline and voiced those, those difficulties that I was having. So that's what I would just say, talk. I think... Obviously, I'm grateful for the fact that I know what I wanted to do from a young age, which is not common. If it wasn't for football, I still wouldn't know what I wanted to do. But I think just for anyone out there who's struggling to know who they are, what they want to do, it's okay. Like, you're not meant to figure it out, otherwise life will be boring, you know? So things like Childline and just having that option there to go to if you're ever feeling lost which a lot of people are, is so important. And just to pick up the phone or online chat or whatever, it's just important. So, yeah, I think just live in the present. I think one of the most important things that you can like focus on when you're struggling with your identity is that you are who you are and just be happy with that. Like down to me balancing masculine and feminine energy. Just because like my feminine energy is not fully female, why all of a sudden have I now got masculine energy? Do you get what I mean? It's, it's balancing it all and vice versa if you're a man dealing with that and someone saying that you're too feminine, whatever, not like, so what? Like, just as long as you're being who you are, that's fine. And I think that if you're struggling with that, contact Childline and see if there's any ways that they can help you, like, just being comfortable within your own skin. That's all we have time for today. I want to give a massive shout out to my guests for not only joining in with this conversation, but being their true selves, being vulnerable and being open about a lot of really big topics. We were top X. Tuckets. I was there, man. I was there. <laughs> I was nearly there. there. I was nearly there. there. Right, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Oh, uh, my gosh. All right, cool. Improv it, though. That's, that yeah, yeah, works yeah, yeah. for you. See, 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 see